Good afternoon, everyone. Um, test, is testing, all right, we're good. Well, tough act to follow as always after Spencer. I'm delighted to be here today addressing and sharing with you uh, everything that Drift has. But quickly about me, I'm David. I'm one of the co-founders of Drift. And uh, many of you in this room might know me as Cindy's co-founder, my better half. Today, I'm here to share a little bit about you, a little bit with you about uh, Drift as the DeFi Super Protocol. Before I dive into it, the current state of finance is extremely centralized. Everything is locked behind KYC, and ultimately, you are essentially at the mercy of what the centralized exchange applications look like. However, it's also expensive to operate, and to access these products requires many barriers. But at the same time, despite these trade-offs, users still prefer centralized products, with a short history of crypto capturing this in a bottle. The usage of DeFi did nothing to meaningfully change the adoption of it, even following FTX, Voyager, and Celsius. Why? Because DeFi remains capitally inefficient today. In a trustless system, lending requires over-collateralization of assets to participate, and leverage trading requires the additional margin to be posted when compared against traditional systems. So being permissionless is not enough. Being transparent is not enough. Ultimately, it's capital, effici capital efficiency that is going to be the key to determining where you, as a user, deposit your, deposit your assets. This was a missing gap that we observed in the market, and without capital efficiency, DeFi will never hit mainstream adoption. And this is why Drift was created. Drift was founded in 2021 with a simple yet bold mission. Open up on-chain trading with for everyone, trading with any asset. Since launch, Drift has rapidly become the fastest growing crypto exchange in history, hitting 1 billion in trading volume in 39 days. Currently, we've also become one of the largest DeFi platforms on Solana, processing over 50 billion in volume across 200,000 users and having 700 million in deposits on our platform. Visually, this is what Drift looks like today. Drift offers a suite of applications all on one platform. Borrow Lend, derivatives, prediction markets, AMM systems, and wealth management. We started here, just as derivatives. One basic front end, one DeFi primitive. However, as our V1 launched, we quickly found out that after hitting product market fit very quickly, many users wanted to trade with alternative assets. They did not just want to use USD as collateral. They wanted Sol, BTC, ETH, Drift, Jito, and even your favorite meme coin. Users also wanted to see better liquidity on chain. So what did we do? We created a better system. We introduced a hybrid AMM, order book, and even auction mechanism model. Beyond that, users also wanted to see wealth products. So what did we do? We created Drift Earn. And then finally, when people wanted to bet on the election markets, we created that too. We created a system where you could go long on a Trump market, short Bitcoin, or with one single pool of collateral, all while that pool was earning yield. This is a mouthful, but zooming out, this is what lives under the driftwood today. Effectively, five otherwise separate protocols which are natively integrated under what we think is a super, super protocol. All the margining lives on Zone Prime today. This single user account allows you to participate in all these activities, uh, all these activities and applications. So to touch on the progress we've made in the very short three years that we've been live, we currently host over $650 million in volume uh, in deposits, manage over $1.5 billion in weekly trading volume, and annualizes $30 million in revenue across a base of approximately 200,000 users. Now, this is a really promising start, but for us, we believe this is only 10% of what we want to get to. Now, if there's one visual I want this audience to take away from today, it's this one. This is our engine for capital efficiency, a deposit savings account with an inbuilt brokerage function. And with that, I'm going to walk everyone through two of our core functions, the pillars of earn and trade. Let me share with you how that works. First, earn. You can earn across 30 different asset types by simply depositing them into Drift. The borrow market 
drives the underlying yield for each asset, and it's something that everyone here in this room should be familiar with. However, what is different and what is unique about Drift is our USDC rate, and this is what I want to draw everyone's attention to. This rate can fluctuate anywhere from 16 to 14% as the demand on USDC changes, and in times of extreme bull market situations, can rise as high as 25%. More on this shortly. On the next layer up, that is the consumer layer, here are five sample applications that are built solely on Drift, which utilize our borrow lend primitive. The analog to Web2 is that these products represent robo-advisory style products. Some come in tokenized forms. Some purely point deposits to our underlying protocol. The magic of these applications is that each of these are run by separate teams with separate UIs and built for their unique group of audiences. Aside from boasting the argument for decentralization, the number of these users from these individual applications are often abstracted, by, abstracted from Drift. So what does that mean? Imagine a single Vault product that is built on Drift. The Vault product shows up as one single user account, but that Vault might have thousands of depositors participating in it. Prior to Drift, there was never a single venue on chain that provided cross-margining. Everything was settled in USDC, and we believe this is what sets us apart. Drift has created a powerful and capital-efficient capital risk engine that enables the best liquidity fully on-chain and cross-margin on Solana's L1. Each asset carries an asset weight that we treat as a global pool of collateral that can be utilized on any of these above applications discussed earlier. This allows a user to potentially set up very sophisticated trading strategies on Drift because why? It's all on a single platform and all natively margin for. So the magic of this flywheel is that speculators bootstrap this economy. Each time someone opens up a position, they are funding the yield a depositor receives. When more positions get opened, i.e. when trade activity increases, the rate for these deposits increase. When the deposit rate spikes up, it attracts new depositors to come in to try and arbitrage these rates or simply receive better ones than what they're getting. And as such, this then in turn reduces the price of capital for future borrowers. So as so, you see this positive flywheel spin in a very positive feedback loop. So with that thesis in mind, we strongly believe that super protocols will overtake isolated protocols. There is absolutely no reason why anyone in this room should have the activity spread across five different platforms. It just doesn't make sense. It should all be on one platform, and we are already seeing the winners of the cycle embody this thesis. Consider Jito, who presented earlier, combining liquid staking with restaking. Otherwise, a combination of Lido and Eigenlayer today. Another way to visualize the super, super protocol ecosystem is through this diagram. The front end applications are the products that push liquidity to the prime engine. This is what we see as the vertical access. These are applications that represent structured products such as savings, basis, OTC venues that serve upstream clients, all the way to algorithmic stable coins that are being natively issued on Drift today. The horizontal integration refers to adding on additional primitives to Drift's already present central margin engine. Options and FX are two of the first that come to mind here. Options are a natural fit, as Spencer discussed, as you can immediately create a concession if you put on options and derivatives trade together. For FX, this is not too far either, as it leverages the central risk engines that we've already created. What the Drift ecosystem looks like today is this. The set of core products is built by the team. Trade, earn, and bet. This is then followed by the next concentric ring of projects that represent ecosystem teams building on top of Drift. All this is underpinned then by the various types of collaterals that we support, who are often projects in their own right. Each of these ecosystem projects contributes to Drift in a unique way across all these five verticals. To date, there are over 30 of these applications building on Drift today, and these projects represent a key to scaling and distribution. We believe that in the near future, the on-chain economy will be growing at a faster pace than traditional finance rails. The on-chain economy will surpass its off-chain counterpart with explosive growth in how assets are being issued, whether it's real-world native assets, 
DPN assets, to even meme coins. And we believe the super protocol represents the best venue to capture all of that. Consider this. Stablecoin market cap flows uh, currently are growing at 30% year on year. It sits at 150 billion. If you consider the largest asset management institutions, such as Franklin Templeton and BlackRock, they're all issuing tokens, Benji and Biddle. These are already queued up for integration as collateral on our platform. And already you see proxies of these in existence on Drift, USDY and PYUSD. And then finally, from meme coin launches to NFTs to DeFi primitives to deepen assets, more capital than ever is being allocated on chain to these launches. Bonk, goat, peanut, whiff, frog, Pepe are all names that not many of you, some of you may never have heard of, and I don't blame you. Can I get a show of hands? Who knows what I just said? Quite a lot. I retract my statement. These assets carry market capitalizations ranging from 500, billion, 500 million to 8 billion, highlighting just the size of capital that is entering these systems. But the super protocol isn't without limitation. An integrated cross-margin platform is monolithic. It takes a lot to add functions such as a new market, because as soon as you add a new market, it has the capacity to affect the rest of the system. So for anything that's higher risk, we have to be very careful when thinking about how to add that. Anything that, needs to, anything that gets added has to come at a consideration of risk assessment and analyses on how that will affect the monolithic protocol. So consider permissionless prediction markets. Everyone in this room could participate in a market asking, is David going to go overtime like Spencer? Or will Sol hit an all-time high today at the summit? The former is obviously a very frivolous question and has no place in the central risk engine. But at the same time, it represents a fun and interesting, interesting angle for growth. So as such, it belongs in an isolated pool. Lending pools are similar. For assets that carry systemic risk, such as funding rate-based stable coins or index-based tokens, a single unwind can depeg the entire system. So as such, it's very important that these are isolated and kept away from the main risk engine. And finally, even thinking about new structured products, that's new structured products that are yet to exist. And I'm going to use Deepin as an example here. Deepin represents almost what corn futures look like in the 1850s a new type of asset where users are providing services to physical infrastructure and receiving a token reward. Now, these token rewards are inherently volatile in nature. So as a user, as a participant, you want to hedge that out straight away. So naturally, you should be shorting a perpetual futures contract to make sure that when you are getting that token, you can immediately lock that profit in. Again, we believe DPN has the capacity to become a huge market, but in its infancy, it belongs in an isolated pool. Think of each isolated pool as being adjacent to the cross-margin protocol, accessible in the same way, but ring-fenced for security. At the end of the day, growth is very important for Drift, but risk management is even more important. To date, the users that have touched Drift represent 1% of the users that have touched CFI. For us, that number is 200,000 users. For CFI, that number is approximately 20 million. That's a magnitude of 100x difference. And beyond that, we are seeing today's leading financial applications at approximately 50 million. So there's a big set of users here and a big challenge ahead of us. This is the first phase that Drift is in. Drift serves DeFi power users who deeply understand self-custody, have an acute understanding of Solana, and apply strong risk management systems, complex, apply strong risk management concepts across tokens such as LSTs, borrow lending, looping, and perpetual futures. Our power users are deeply in tune with the most complex features of Drift. But this isn't everyone. In this phase, we are building the financial infrastructure that will eventually power large-scale, mass-market consumer applications that run on DeFi. The Drift machine as it stands today combines the best of trading infrastructure, borrow lending infrastructure, into a singular machine. Following the infrastructure we built in phase one, the mission to wrap DeFi into mass market consumer applications is very critical to ensure that we reach a wider pool of users. Success in this phase means shipping a mass market product that enables millions of users to benefit from DeFi. 
This means launching new consumer-facing apps, embedded neobank-style products, and prediction market products that will showcase the magic of DeFi to 50 million users without onboarding restrictions. Drift will launch a neobank app for crypto natives focused on both trading and yield earning to bridge the speculation, bridge the gap between speculation and financial management. Users will be able to cross-margin prediction markets, crypto assets, and real assets, real world assets, all in one platform. And finally, this phrase is going to illustrate Drift strength as a piece of composable financial infrastructure that captures value at the consumer level, consumer infrastructure and ecosystem level. We have built an infrastructure set of smart contracts for anyone to earn yield and trade permissionlessly. This is a powerful unlock, only possible in crypto, that enables anyone in the world to essentially create a consumer app that wraps on top of Drift. These new front ends serve as natural distribution channels, enabling us to onboard users from geographies where traditional financial rails and banking are inaccessible. So to analogize, on-chain vaults will replace institutional hedge funds with lower performance fees and, more, and create more transparent structures. On-chain DEXs and terminals will replace brokerage accounts. On-chain loans will replace lending desks. And finally, on-chain yields will replace savings accounts. Ultimately, where we see ourselves is that Drift will be the super protocol that powers a million financial applications. These permissionless applications will allow users globally to attain what they perceive to be generational wealth. It is important as it places the power of users' financial future back into their own hands. At the end of all this, we are not looking to become the front end of DeFi. We are looking to power the front end of banking. Thank you very much.